Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The greatest privilege outside of being born again is to be able to be married, I believe. The Lord willing, God gives you children. You know, it's, it's an incredible thing, of course. You'd, you'd be a fool not to get emotional as a parent, would you not? To be able to understand where God brings us from. Sin, the darkness. God is so good and so privileged and honored. Life is a, it's a very interesting subject, is it not, Pastor? Life itself. It's a, it's a lifelong subject that God, I believe, will, he'll never not teach us something if we're willing to listen, if we're willing to pay attention to what I believe he wants to do. In the grand scheme of things, I know that he's conforming us to his image. How many can say amen? And. In the midst of all of that is this subject called life. And I'm so honored. I, 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 mean, I mean that from the bottom of my heart to have my wife, and my babies with me. To be here with you this morning. I, I mean that it. it it's an honor to serve the Lord. And it's an honor to serve each other. It really is. When we're really, when I'm really serving God with everything that is within me, how many know that you will serve your neighbor? You will serve your elder, whoever that might be. You will serve the younger. You'll do everything right. One thing I've learned in this thing called life, I said to a brother the other week, and I said, motive, my motive for life matters most. My motive, your motive in this, when I'm saying life, I'm talking eternal life. You understand what I'm talking about? I'm talking about serving the Lord, being a Christian. Walking with God. Our, our motive in life is going to be, I believe, the all-determining factor of how we go through this, what I call this transition stage of life. And in the middle of all of, of this, this life, almost 50 years on the earth, however many years we've, we've been here, Trials come. How many know what I'm talking about? Of course we do. Trials and tests and questions. We reason. How many reason in the house today? We reason things. Um, we, we question. Sometimes I hate to say whether God is real or not. Amen. We question, well, God, you know, I'm serving you with everything I know. Isn't that a proud statement? It, isn't that a, I, I'm serving you with everything I know to do. God, it, that, I've, I've, I've even said that. But that's such a, it's such an egotistical, proud statement. God, I'm, you see, we, we stop right there, don't we? God, I'm, and God's like, no, I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one that's responsible for everything. God is so, there's a word that I've learned to appreciate in this walk of life. And it's called sovereign. God is so sovereign. He, how many honestly in your heart would say, sometimes the things that God allows in life, I'm going somewhere with my thoughts this morning. Just bear with me. 
How many, when things happen in your life, a loved one that's lost, you're praying and believing for numerous years. You been there? I've been there. I'm there. Got loved ones that I know that are in my house, in, in, in my family. I'm saying not my personal house, but in my bloodline that we know that are lost. And things happen. People die. Are you with me? And just, just life happens. And we question sometimes, God, I'm praying. I'm believing. I was talking with someone before service, and, and I said to them, I, I'm going to use what you just said to tie in something that I know, I know in my heart. I've struggled sometimes with believing God. I, I have. I, I stand before you this morning very honored, very privileged to be able to be who I am in the Lord Jesus Christ. 22 years walking with this mighty God. Live, how many know this, is, this could go along with ministerial conference uh, terminology? But how many, this is a thought I had just a couple weeks ago, and I just want to throw this out there to us leaders and not that we don't all serve because we all do in some capacity. But how many know or how many would agree with the statement that I'm going to say? And I'm saying this. You know, ministry's fun when everything's going good. <laughs> it's sometimes, man, I tell you. Sometimes I just want to weasel out. How many, Are you with me? I just want to get out. God's like, no, I'm going to put you in. You're right there. Every time. Every time. You know why? Because God is teaching me a lesson of life. To love him. To love my neighbor. To love you in spite of, no matter what. I tell you, that's easier said than done. And it takes the Holy Ghost to be able to give us as our dear pastor had said, you see, this life is so divine. It's going to take a greater power than ourself. Because how many would say, you can't keep yourself. You can't do it. As much as, much as I possibly think I can, I'm okay. I'm all right, but unknown to me, I might be drifting. I might be drifting. I might be slipping in the faith. I'm not talking about not coming to church. I'm not talking about doing all the things that we know to do in this thing called life, paying our tithe, doing all of the, of the, the, the practical means of church. And in the midst of all of that, if we don't keep our focus on the Lord, amen, we can fall into this trap or this, this enslavery, if you will, of drifting, just drifting along in life. And all of, all of a sudden, we find ourselves maybe a little further away then maybe we ought to be in this life. So there's, there's this incredible, incredible subject of life. And it's going to take the Holy Ghost to be able to empower us. Would you agree with me? Amen. It's going to take a return or a repeat of the power of God in our lives. Yes. It, is going, it is absolutely so imperative that we be saved, amen, and be filled with God. Brother asked if I had any scriptures that I would share. And, and I would go to Ephesians chapter 5 and verses number 18. You could put that up there on the screen. Amen. I know some of us know it. But it says, and be not drunk with wine, but... Be filled with the Spirit. How many know in life 
there is an excess of everything that has to offer, especially, you know, the crazy thing is, you know, I work with a children's home and, you know, we always tend to, I'm going to move around a little bit. We always tend to, when we talk about God challenging people and, you know, God touching lives, you know, we always seem to gear towards the young. Is that right? We always look at the young. And I know there's a lot of truth in that. But I tell you, there's a lot of adults in here this morning that need a touch of God. Amen. We need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to be refilled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because this world is filled with excess. It's filled with everything it has to offer us. And God, God Almighty, He offers us one thing. And that one thing is his son. And the power of the son lies within the power of the Holy Ghost. We need, I'm telling you, if we ever need a return or a repeat of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it is now. Because if not, we will just drift. We will just slip along in life. We will just go along with the current of the world. There's always forces at work. Do you agree with that? There's always, we, Pastor Paul and Beth, we were talking last night at the house. You see, if we fail to realize or we neglect to believe and see the truth that there is a force at work against us. There is, and we have to understand that it's not a physical force. It is a spiritual reality called the devil, called the enemy. We are fighting a real enemy. We are fighting ourselves, amen? We are fighting the devil. But I've come to realize, young men, young women, all of us today, You see, I've played defense, I believe, far too long. It's time for us, the church of the living God, to understand who we are in the Lord. I'm not talking about being proud. I'm not talking about being cocky. I'm not talking about being self-righteous and thinking I got it all because I know I don't. I want to tell you this morning, I've learned a lot about this God. And I just have to ask myself the question in anything that's going on. I'm like, God, what are you doing? What are you doing in this? He's, you we're never going to get away with his, from his conforming us to his image if we will yield to him. But you see, when we wrestle, we don't wrestle against my fellow neighbor. We have to understand that this is a major conflict. But we also have to understand that we are, can someone say amen, on the winning side. I have to believe that. But you see, why I'm sharing these just these exhortations, if you will, of truth that I've learned in this thing called life, it's going to take the Holy Ghost inside of me To be able to reveal to me what I'm displaying to you. It has to be the spirit of God. It doesn't just come from me. It doesn't just come from, you know, just whatever in my life. No, the the Holy Spirit is the translator and he is going to reveal anything in my life. Amen. That's not Christ. He's going to show me these things in life that aren't like his son. He's going to show me. Thank God. I was asking the Lord this morning. God, I'm, I'm preparing. I'm, I'm praying. I'm doing everything I know to do. And I felt the Holy Ghost nudge me three times this morning. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. You know why? Because I need his help, brother. I need his help. You need his help. The Holy Ghost is what? He's a helper. He's our helper. He's our counselor. You need counseling this morning? Go to God. 
Be filled with God. Don't be filled with yourself. You been there? I'm so full of God. God saying you're so full of yourself. I've said that before. Man, I'm so full of God right now. The Holy Ghost said to me, you're so full of yourself. I'm like, oh my gosh. You got to be kidding me. That was like 20 years ago. Yeah. Man, I'm so full of God right now. God's like, you're so full of yourself. I was like, oh, Lord, I better keep my mouth shut. Just let me live. <laughs> huh? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to live, God. Oh, God's like, I know, but I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to conform you. Huh? You're getting, you're, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I've realized something in these past, say, five or so years of me walking with the Lord, ministry, pastoring, family, and doing all of what we know to do. And I've come to realize this incredible truth in this thing called life. My weakness is when I'm at my strongest. When, I'm, when I know I can't, God says, I can. I will. I will. I can't do it, God. God's like, exactly. You can't do it. And so therefore... It causes me to be dependent. A couple of weeks ago, I was just walking, whatever, praying, whatever I was doing. About two, three weeks ago. And I shared about what someone had shared before with me this morning on, on this subject. About faith. About believing. How many been in prayer and not seen the answer? It's tough. It's tough sometimes. God, praying, believing. About three week, about three or so weeks ago, we all know the scriptures for the most part. Probably a lot of us in here. And I have known and quoted them for over two decades. For my family. How many would understand the scripture that says, or know the scripture where it says, where, where Paul is talking to the Philippian jailer? And he said, What, what must I do huh, to be saved? My whole family's in jeopardy. They're lost, they're going to hell. He said, If you believe if you believe he said you and your household will be saved and so then life comes tests come I'm believing God amen I'm in an altar I'm praying I'm just using it as a symbolic I don't live here but I live there in my heart. I'm believing. I'm trusting for my aunts, for my uncles. Hey, are you with me? I'm believing God. My, aunt, my mom's been passed away for a couple of years now. I'm believing God for my mom. Are you with me today? You see, why I'm sharing this is because it is go outside of the Holy Ghost living inside of us. We are not going to have the faith to believe him to the capacity to where we know, did you hear me? Where we know that God has our petitions. The Spirit of God will give me the faith. He will give me the ability to believe that. You see, well, I believe, so we fall into that trap again. We're slipping away. We're drifting away in unbelief. I felt the Lord say to me a few weeks ago, stop hindering me. Stop hindering me. Don't hinder me. What hinders God? Unbelief. We question. We fear all these things in this subject of life. And God, as I said last night over dinner with the, the families that were there, us, it was, we were fellowshipping. This subject of life has this one word 
called trust. And there's another incredible virtue that comes with this thing called life. It's called faith. Holy Ghost said to me in prayer, it's probably like 2017. I was at the church, and the Holy Ghost, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, I'm so burdened. I'm dealing with all kinds of things personally, just in my heart, doing everything I can, like I said earlier, to serve the Lord. But I, I honestly was, I'm like, God, I'm. I, I'm trying, I'm, I, I'm tired. Anybody been there? I'm tired, I'm, I, I, I'm weary, I, I'm pastoring, I'm, I'm trying to lead, I'm, I'm trying to husband, I'm trying to dad, I'm trying to friend, and though all I, I, I'm trying everything, and it's like everything's coming against me. Seems like I got more enemies than I can count. So God's teaching me something. Teaching me how to love. Teaching me to be a man of mercy. Teaching me to be a man of forgiveness. Teaching me a man to be like him. I can't do it. I can't do it. God's like, no, you can't. I'm going to have to do it through you. God said to me, I'm telling you, I wrote it down. It's like I got saved again, brother. I mean, I'm just like, oh, God. Holy Ghost said to me, I'm going to teach you what real faith is. And I'm like, oh, dear Lord. I'm, I'm telling you, Pastor, I was, not, I was not happy. I'm telling you the truth. I was not happy happy dare I say I wasn't happy with the Lord because I was like oh. I didn't know what he was going to do I didn't know the circumstances that were going to take place we could go to my son being sick when we were in Africa long story don't have necessarily time to tell it some of you I know know about that but all the while, you see, if we could just get this one excerpt of truth, God is, can somebody believe this with me today? I'm telling you, God is an eternity ahead. My seasons are going to change. I'm in the bathroom 30 minutes ago. And I'm thinking, praying, what am I going to say, God? Just be yourself. Be real. Be pure. Share your heart. Just, just be pure before the people. Right. Holy Ghost said to me, your seasons are going to change. Right. I want you to tell them that. Yeah. Your seasons are going to change. Hallelujah. But I am the same. I'm the same. I never change. And when I know that, in my heart, in my spirit, there's a deep down, just a, a, a resonated foundation that takes place in my heart that I know that no matter what takes place in my life, you know what? I have the audacity to say I am okay with it. Yeah. Brother, that's easier said than done. Because I'm not just going to say that. I'm not just, okay, God, do what you want to do. God's like, are you sure you want me to do that? I'm not talking fear. I'm not talking about being scared of God. You see, we fail to realize in life that we tend to keep things from God instead of really, really giving them to God. We keep things because 
We're afraid, per se. Well, if I, if I, I want to tell you today, you don't have to ever, 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 I want you to mark this down in your heart. You don't ever have to be afraid of God. You don't ever have to run from God. You can run to Him as we sang this morning. You crawl, you walk, you whatever. You can go to God in anything. You're not going to surprise Him. You're not going to scare Him off. Hallelujah. You ever been there? Huh? Got things going on, boiling in your heart? I want to say honestly and humbly, I'm thankful this morning that I've had the courage to not go away from Him, but go to Him. Go to Him. You can go to Him with anything. You can tell Him any secret of your heart. Anything. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what we've gone through in life. You can talk to God about anything. But I'm going back to the Holy Ghost because it's going to take the Holy Ghost inside of you to be able to resonate that truth in your heart to be able to know that what you're doing is the right thing. Because you and yourself are never going to go to God. You see, the Holy, no man, it says no man can go to God except the Spirit of God draw him. You see, that's why I've come to understand this subject of sovereignty. I used to think I had a lot to do with it. Now I know you understand that we have the faith. We put our faith to practice. We approach God. We have a will of our own. Are you with me this morning? We have a choice to make. We know all that. But I'm here to tell you today, I learned this truth that I know that I, before I ever made that choice, the Holy Ghost is already at work. See, I think yeah, I used to think I used to be the one doing all the work. Well, I may, I did it. No, God's like, no, 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 no. I did that. It's called sovereignty. It's called all power. You see, that takes nothing away from what I just said. Our will to choose. You understand? Our will to make a choice. But you see, when we stop making the right choices. We fall into this danger or this trap of slipping. Okay. So the greatest way to alter or combat, if you will, this drifting is the Spirit of God inside of us. He's the, he's the one that's going to give me the ability. How many know you find yourself sometimes in life? I'm not talking about going away from God and, 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 and backsliding to the degree. I mean, it's possible. You see, if we compromise, and I'm going to share a few truths from this, this man from this book that I got some years ago. See, if we start to compromise in our belief and our believing we start reasoning things out how many know what I'm talking about start reasoning things well I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay I mean pastor preached on the rapture and are you rapture ready you know all these things I feel like I am you know whether you are or whether you're not is that right you know that you know you know you know what's going on in your heart you know what's going on you know if you're, you're compromising a little bit here and there. You know if you're slipping a little bit and compromising in your thoughts and in your heart. You know that in your heart. And I'm not just talking about, you see, again, I'm not talking about to the teenagers. Huh? We always blame the teenagers. What about the mom and the dad that's in the home? What about the elders in the church that are supposed to be examples to those underneath them? You see what I'm saying? So God covers all the ground. He doesn't just look at one huh, and look at the other. No, God's not partial to anybody. We can all fall victim of this danger of what I call drifting. We can all fall into this trap 
of drifting or slipping away, if you will. So we compromise a little bit. We get a little casual, huh, in life. What do we do? We start to compromise a little bit. Is that right? Well, I'm okay. I'm in church. Is that right? We say that. You, we, we wouldn't like to admit those things, but we say that. There's some today that aren't in church. That's not, that's not for us to step on toes or anything like that. There is a danger even in some of us that are here because some of us that are even here this morning could be in the danger zone of drifting away even though you're in the house of God. It can happen. Just because you're here doesn't mean you back the pastor 100%. Just because you're here doesn't mean you love God 100%. Is that right? And just because, dare I say, those that aren't here, but us super spiritual people, think just because they're not here, they're worse than me. Is that right? I don't know about you, but I've said, man, man I'm, I'm here, man. You see, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost came. Acts 2 One through four, we know it. I know this church knows these verses well. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, how many are with me this morning? Amen. They were all with one accord. Is that right? They were all with one mind. Is that right? In one accord, in one place. They were all with one mind. Is that right? The Holy Ghost came in one place. The Spirit of God came in one place. And he also came to one people, one person, per se. There there may as well have just been one person there versus, say, 120. He may as well have just come to one. Doesn't matter who we are. Because they were in such one accord, there was not, and why I'm saying this is because just because We are here in body doesn't mean we are here in spirit. I'm here. I came up and paid my tithe. We always say those things, don't we? I can't get out of like doing pastor terminology. It's just like in my blood. Can't get away from it, though. It's just in me. It's just life. But you see, just because we're here today doesn't mean we're all here today. It doesn't mean that. I would like to say different. I really would. But because you see, this isn't just for Calvary Temple Assemblies of God. This is people across the world. You see, it's a challenge. It's a challenge of life. That God has to, like Paul said earlier, it take, I, I hate that it takes us time. Are you with me? I hate that it takes us time to like get into that mode of, of worship. Amen. I, I've come to realize something that, you know, when we, we, we accept, I said this statement to our church some time ago. I actually said it last week, and I'm going to say it here today, and I'm going to tie in something a little bit further, and I'm going to share that little girl. She was smiling at me. Hello. Are you a good girl? Huh? She's so good. Huh? You love your mommy, huh? I believe, and this is a general statement for people. This isn't just here. I believe it's everywhere. This is to the church. This is to me. I'm walking again. I walk and pray a lot, do whatever. And I'm just, you know, I'm thinking. Just thinking, praying. Holy Ghost said to me, you accept too much. And you expect too little. And I was like, okay. Isn't it true? 
We accept so much, the Lord. But we expect very little. We have to come to the place in our hearts where I do the opposite of that. So this is where, again, as you walk, as you trust the Lord, I I have these thoughts like, oh, man, man, that'll preach. Huh? Man, I'm going a, I'm to a say that to the church. We accept too much and we expect too little, church. We're compromising. We're becoming casual. We're going to become a casualty if we become casual too long. Are you with me? Everyone shouts, oh my gosh, yeah, you, you, but you know what, you're right, we accept, we accept so much junk today, is that right? We accept almost anything, huh, we use the saying anything goes, is that right? And we expect very little from God, I'm saying. But as I was walking the other week again, I began to really think about what I said. And I thought, I felt the Lord provoke me again. And I just thought, well, what about, what about the opposite of that? You see, some people, I hate to say it, some of us this morning, please don't raise your hand. Some of us in here, and again, this is a general statement, this is, Stuff you learn about people. This isn't just us. This isn't not, it's about people as a whole. Some of us are so negatively minded. I mean, if the Holy Ghost moves in this house, we'd be the ones sitting in the back corner thinking, well, it didn't move like I wanted him to. He moved, but he sure didn't move in me. Yeah, that's because you didn't move. That's because you didn't move. We expect, ah, whatever. Just be another normal service. We'll be good. Paul will get up there. Logan will get up there. And Pastor Perry will preach his guts out. And we'll just be do business as usual. Is that right? We expect too little. We accept too much as a people. But you know, I begin to think about the Lord in that and think about hope and faith and trust. And the Lord's like, yeah, I'm I'm like, God, but what about those that accept nothing? Huh? What about the opposite? I accept nothing. I am not liberal. I'm not talking about politics. I'm not liberal minded. I accept nothing. I'm to, I, I am as conservative as they come. I want to say I'm a holy man. I am a holy woman. I, I, I want to do everything that I can to live a godly life. Are you with me? And I, guess what? If I'm accepting nothing from this world, I'm not accepting any of the excess that's going on. No, I'm not going to be filled with wine. No, I'm going to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. I'm going to walk with God. I accept no compromise. I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to see revival in my church. I'm going to see people saved and healed and delivered. That's what I'm accepting. I'm accepting that. I am, and because I'm accepting that, I am expecting that. I'm expecting that. You're accepting nothing, man. That garbage coming in the room, nah. No. In a right spirit, I'm talking about. I'm expecting much from God. Amen? And I'm not saying, God, you need to do it. God, you better. I'm not talking about that. I'm, not, I'm talking about a faith that wells up inside that says, God, I 
doing everything. Again, the right motives. Everything's pure God. I, 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 don't, I don't accept that. I, I, I'm expecting you to do something mighty. Amen. I'm expecting people to be saved. Amen. Like my dear sister shared with me earlier about the family that's gotten saved. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God can do it again. He's going to save our whole households if we we'll believe it again. No, I'm not going to expect, I'm not going to accept that lie. No, I'm not going to say, no, well, it'll be okay. It'll be all right. No, I'm not accepting that junk. I'm expecting God to do something. And when I do, guess what? He will. He will. So, here we are again in this thing called life. I'm expecting much, Pastor. I'm talking, I'm, I mean, I'm, my family's going to be saved. I'm talking, my family's going to get born again. I'm going to see them in church. They're going to be healed. They're going to be delivered. I'm talking, my, 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 my backslidden son, he's a wayward teenager. He's a wayward 20-something-year-old. His life, he's divorced. He's got kids that run from God. They don't care about God. All these things, oh, God, I'm expecting you to touch them, God. That's a prayer of faith right there, right? Huh? You'd think it was. Guess what it was? It was. But guess what happens? Nothing. God prayed. I'm talking about faith. I'm just talking about trust. I'm just talking about life. I don't have no title on my sermon this morning. Danger, drifting, whatever. I'm going to get into that in just a second as we close. But I want to tell you something, young man. This thing called life is so awesome. And it's a trust. It's a lifetime of trust. It's a lifetime of accepting. When I accept, if we can come to the place where we can honestly say, God, I accept whatever you have. That's easier said than done. And I have not always been able to say that. God, whatever my lot is, okay. I'm telling you, you want peace like a river? You start believing that. I'm telling you. You want rest? You want God's rest? You start living that. You start living. Now, what's it going to take? It's going to make you, it's just going to cause you to live. You just live. Just live. I don't know what hold tomorrow holds. Is that right? My seasons are changing. God's the same. But do I believe that? If I believe that, then I know that God, no matter what he does, no matter what he allows, is conforming me to his image. And so I accept that, and I believe that, and I rest in that, and I have the peace that passeth all understanding. I have not always been able to say that. I have not always been able to testify of these truths that I am disclosing to you this morning on this thing called life. My mom dying on her deathbed. I could go on and on and on. My son getting sick. Us preparing to go to Africa. These are just three, these, these are just subjects in our lives that God allows. And I don't always have the faith to believe that. Are you with me this morning? I don't always have the faith to believe that. So again, it takes the Holy Ghost inside of me. To be able to give me that sustaining, keeping power. Because what does Peter say? We are kept by what? By the power of God. I'm on my way to Africa in a few months. We, I believe we had been here or might be coming to here. I can't exactly remember. But I'm with Stephen McKay at a pastor's conference. And I just want to just share this with you just for a moment. I'm on my way home. I just got out of bed. I mean, I just woke up out of bed, put my feet on the ground, 
And the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, I'll never lead, lead you where I first haven't prepared you. I just sat there. That's, I mean, I'm not thinking nothing. I'm, I know I'm getting ready to go to Africa, all these things. I'm getting ready to go. But I rounded the bed, put my foot on, feet on the ground. And that's what God said to me. And, of course, I start thinking things and the scriptures of Moses and all of these things and going back. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, okay, okay. And I had such a peace. I had such a rest. I just knew that everything was going to be okay. Yes, I'm nervous. Yes, I'm taking my, my kids there into Africa and all the hygiene and all of those things, of course, they take place. Those are natural means of anxiety that we have. But you see, God, I said earlier, he's always ahead. Always. He's always ahead of us. So if he's always ahead of us, what need we fear? We can trust him. Because he's not going to lead. Guess what? If someone's going to lead you, where are they at? Where are they? So if someone's leading me, where are they? Huh? They're in front of me. Is that right? But you see, God's not just in front of us. He's everywhere. And he knows how to take care of us. He knows how to touch your life. And he knows also what it's going to take to get you there. That's the part where it's tough. Am I willing? Can I come to the place, ma'am, sir, young man, young women, whoever we are, are you willing to accept God's no? Not right now. I'm not talking about physical things. I'm talking about spiritual things. Are you willing? When God says, you wait. In the midst of delay. Is that right? What does the Bible say in Proverbs? I think it's chapter 13, verse 11. Hope deferred. You know what it goes on to say? You know what it does? It makes the heart sick. We have hope. Huh? I'm expecting much. I'm expecting God to move. And God is. He's moving. We can't see it. We can't feel it. Huh? We want to feel everything. Is that right? I'm teaching you what real faith is. I don't understand. God's like, I'm not asking you to understand. I'm asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to trust me. I'm asking you to put your hand in mine and let me lead you. Let me lead you. Let me be your guide. You see, the Holy Ghost is the guide. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. See, he's going to teach us. He's going to show us who he is. But when we're hoping much, how many have been there? Some of you were there this morning. I'm hoping. Man, I'm believing. Is that right? I mean, I'm hoping. I'm hoping and I'm believing for the best. Amen? Come on now. That's, a, that's anticipation. Is that right? That's hope. That's expectation. But what happens when nothing happens? You see, that's where the test of life comes in. That's where real faith comes alive and you die and God's there and you realize God did it and you had nothing to do with it. You see, that's the real test. Because if God did it, we've heard this all our lives, some of us. God did it on your time, and then it'd be us and not God. Is that right? God's like, it's going to be my timing or no timing. And so I believe that. And what do I do? I just, I don't lay down and fall asleep. But I do. I just rest. I just rest. I just rest. Okay, God. Okay. But you see, it takes life to teach me takes experience to me building character you see God's more interested in your character today than he is your conduct and what we do in ministry 
He's going to do much more to conform us into his character. And so then he uses life to do that. The ups and the downs, the hills and the valleys. Is that right? He does that because he's sovereign. I hope I'm making sense this morning. But it makes the heart sick. That word deferred, I know some of us know what that word means. It just means delayed. It just simply means delayed. In the midst of all of the delay, God, I'm believing. <laughs> you are. You are. In my timing, you'll know. You'll know that it's me. But you see, I love the end of the verse. How many know that God covers all the ground? Huh? But what, what, but what, 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 come on, can somebody say it with me? But when, what, but when the answer, huh? Well, when that answer cometh, you know what it is? It's a tree of life. It's a tree of life. Huh? I'll give you the right to eat of my tree. Fruit, life, offspring, that's what it means. Your fruit, your offspring, it's a tree of life. Amen? Not just me. I don't care about me anymore. I don't care about me. What about everybody else? What about you in this building this morning? Huh? Let's not, let's not fall into the danger zone of slipping away in, in compromise and unbelief. Amen? I want to share these couple of truths with you this morning. And I want, if you could have these the singers, musicians come. If you could, please, whoever's going to be doing some singing or whatever. I just want you to bear with me for just a minute. The danger signs and what we can do about it. The dangers of drifting. We drift towards compromise, like I said earlier, and we call it tolerance. We say technically... We're okay. We're okay. How many have said that? I, I feel like I'm okay. And you might be. We drift towards disobedience and call it freedom. We drift towards superstition and call it faith. We cherish the indiscipline of lost self-control and call it relaxation. We slouch towards prayerlessness and delude ourselves into thinking we've escaped legalism. We slide toward godlessness and convince ourselves we've been liberated. I want to tell you this morning, God is the only one that can persuade us. Do I have the faith to accept what God allows? Do you, are you struggling this morning with accepting that? Are you struggling this morning and possibly even questioning God, what He's doing in your life? God, why are you doing this? Why are you allowing him or her? I'm just generally speaking because I know humanity enough because I know that's how we think. Why are you allowing this, God? What's happening? Why aren't they in church? Why isn't my family saved? Why are they sick? Why do they have to pass away? Why are they not being healed? Are you with me this morning? Why is this happening, God? And some things bad, sometimes bad things do happen. And we don't understand. But the Holy Spirit, He's your helper this morning. He's your guide that will guide you to Himself. He's not going to lead you outside of Him. He's going to lead you right to Himself. And He's going to comfort you because that's who He is. He's a helper. He's a guide. He's our counselor. Are you with me this morning? You need counsel this morning. You need to come to God. Talk to God. You need to be saved. Refilled with the Holy Ghost. It's time to return. 
and stop the drifting because the Holy Spirit is the, is the one that's going to give us the ability to not drift into relaxation, into compromise, into liberalism, however we want to look at it. I'm not talking about keeping laws. Trust me. I'm not talking about keeping regulations. I'm not talking about keeping our ceremonies and doing all the I's and the U's and dotting the I's and crossing all the T's. I'm not talking about that this morning. I'm talking about being real with God, Brother Paul. I'm talking about being honest with God. I'm talking about going to God on your own, by yourself, you and your heart. You talk to God and you let God talk back to you. Why don't you come this morning? Hallelujah.